It's a monthly Monday call. It happens once a month, um, first uh, Monday. And it is um, one of the calls that happens every Monday in the academy. So where we're doing the hands meditation and talking about different subjects, um, about the sensory inflow, the somatic nervous system, how that all applies in the uh, in our engagement in relationship in life in general and in specific with maybe our lover or with somebody we just um, have a connection with. And um, today is a kind of a free for everybody. You can join. Everybody can join um, at any time. And then the other Mondays is just like for people who are in the academy and just want to go into the online course and just like diving deeper into the material so that you have uh, some kind of references who we are, what we do. And um, so you're welcome at any time back here. So um, just a little bit overview. We do in a few moments the so-called hand meditation. And then I will share with you what that is and why and how and how that's all happening in the nervous system, in the body. And um, we have a normal conversation. You can ask questions. We share. So it's a kind of a very um, real place to engage and connect. And um, again, if you have any kind of in-between um, need to switch your camera off or do anything, please feel free to um, do radical self-care and nobody has to do or say or be anything in here. All right. So um, I have a two camera angle and I'll switch it in a second. And um, I would like to invite you for the next five, six, seven minutes into the hands meditation. And how that goes is you choose an object and take that in your hands, whatever that is. Yeah. Um, can be a, have a piece of wood or it can be an adapter or a pair of glasses, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter what it is. Important is that you sit on a chair, relax, you can lean back or like you, Ingmarie, you lay down or whatever works so that your spine is relaxed, your shoulders are relaxed so that your body knows you're not doing any work. Yeah, so this is the less work that you can literally do. So important is that you're um, feeling comfortable. A little bit like you're sitting on a beach chair and just like getting ready for some relaxation. So I will take a cushion in my on my lap. And why I do that is that I can lean my elbow. And now I switch my camera. So I can lean my elbow on my arms, yeah? And so, so that makes my shoulders more relaxed. And I have an object here in my hands. So the camera just a little bit, that's it. So God, I have the weights there in the back side. So it's, it's an evidence that I work out. Um, and what we're looking for is the sensation in your hands. Yeah. So when you have that in your hands, you literally can feel some tactile information. So the temperature, is it soft? Is it solid? Is it smooth or rough? And what we're looking for here is a specific um, sensation in your skin. It's more like a, a tinglish um, electromagnetic sensation, more like a feeling, yeah, a sensing. And... Um, what the mind normally happen uh, does in the first place is just, you know, you just give it a name, you know how to use it for or what the purpose is. But the intention is that we um, go in on an exploration and just with your hands. So I'll switch my camera back so that you see what I do. And you just start to play with it on your hands, you know, just like maybe just like your palm or between your fingers or maybe your fingertips or the backside. And you can either hold it with one hand and move the other hand over like that, or you just like use it one hand relaxed and move the hand over it. Important is that you just choose the action for yourself so that it's not me telling you what to do or how to do it. The importance here is that you go really slowly. And I like to say you just slow down your speed by half and 
slow it down by half again. And when you find a spot somewhere on your hands that feels pleasant, maybe even pleasurable, and I invite you to stay there. And just to feel. So that you recognize there's no goal here. It's nothing to achieve. Nothing to give or nothing to get. Just the sensing sensation on your skin. Very simple. And if you have thoughts running, that's fine. That's what the mind does. It doesn't need to change anything. Or if your feelings coming up, they're all welcome. It can be anything between boredom and excitement. And experiment with keeping your eyes open or your eyes closed exactly as you like. And we do that now for about five minutes. And you just allow yourself just to tap in. And just to feel. Allow your breath to flow. And if you need to make a sigh, just let it happen. So important here is that you just recognize that you are in action by choice towards a felt sense of pleasure, maybe.
if your mind wanders and ask what is all that about that's fine just bring your attention straight back to the sensation there in your skin in your hands it's like training that little muscle of being aware of what happens there in your skin Right, and then slow your movement down till they stop. And just stay there for a moment. Just notice what you notice in your body. Notice your sensations, the feelings. Maybe there are some emotions. Maybe there's some memories that all of you is welcome. And then gentle, I invite you to opening up your eyes if they're closed. Orient yourself somewhere and your attention slowly back to the screen and I invite you to keep that what you have in your hand in your hand if you want to if you don't want then of course you don't and during this time that we have here together just like here and there bring your attention back to the sensation there in your skin in your hands and we will talk more about that why and how and how that all works and what that is for and And um, I would like to um, ask, what do you notice? How do you feel right now? And please feel free to unmute yourself and uh, share right here, right now, what did you notice after doing that for five minutes with your hands touching an object for yourself? I would like to start. And whatever you experience, there's nothing wrong about it anything so you can share whatever comes up for you okay so um why are we doing that <laughs> it's so interesting i was just creating a video uh, the other day about the um uh, dynamic of hand meditation and the history so that has been used in so many religious things for kind of spiritual purposes in you know in christianity in hinduism in buddhism you find it in uh, sufism in, in so in, in in islam so so the hands have such an important kind of function and because uh, on a neurological level you know, the hands, there are so many nerve endings because they can do so much filigrane detailed work. There's a massive part in the brain dedicated to the hands. And most people have been kind of, um, and, and let's go a little bit in the beginning, uh, in, the, in, the, in the details, and some of you have heard that before. Um, and because there is such a part a, a huge part in the um, uh, brain dedicated to the hands, um, we can use the hands as tools for making sense with the world. So this is how they are created, you know, so it's like when we were little, we're using our hands to just touch everything and just feel everything and making connection. And literally we start forming a 3D reality with our hands because this is how we're making connection with the outer world. And 
um, the hands have this capacity to feel so much. Yeah, and this is what I what what I want to um, provide with this hands meditation is that the hands are amazing tools to feel. Yeah, and and because there's so many nerve ending in the hands, um, we can tap in a part in the brain that is responsible for feelings. Yeah, so that's what I said. Just like if your feelings coming up, or if you relax, it's just like let it all happen. Everything is welcome. But then somehow we just grow up and we just um, get conditioned and we learn in society. And then we just all learn to go in action and do something to provide, to be loved and fit in somehow. And we learn somehow that we use only our hands to provide something and to give. And what I want to do with this hand meditation is giving people the opportunity to tap back into the possibility to use the hands to receive and to feel. Yeah, so so when you literally break down the somatic nervous system, there are just two ways of function of the somatic nervous system. One of them is, you know, everything that goes from your brain into your body. Yeah? And then there is a function that goes from your body into your brain. So the information from the outer world into your brain and the hands have a massive role to play in the somatic nervous system to get information from the outer world. And what I do with this hand meditation is tapping in the sensation by feeling pleasure. So what that does is you release when you feel pleasure with your hands when you touch an object you release in your brain central oxytocin so oxytocin is a neurotransmitter hormone that makes your um, body feel relaxed and connected or it's a so-called laugh hormone or the laugh drug but when you do that for five minutes just with your hands without providing or giving or doing anything you kind of inhibit and block in your brain the release of cortisol and adrenaline, so from your fight and flight center, and that just makes you relaxed. So it's a kind of a practice of self-regulating your nervous system in a way of um, soothing yourself. And when, you, when we do that together in a group like that, it just has a different impact if you would do it on your own. So this is kind of the kind of roots and the core of it and then um on another level uh and this is how i want to break it down when we touch something yeah so so when you touch an object for example and you do it for yourself there's nothing coming back so this thing is not telling you if it feels good for that thing it doesn't really matter it's just like and it doesn't matter what the object is if you're just having a really nice organic piece of wood or if you have a piece of plastic from a camera or if you have you know just like a cloth it, it doesn't matter what matters is that um you are in action for yourself so um and by saying that is we have all this capacity to be in action for others. Yeah? And when we are in action for others, what we most want when we are in action for others, we want that something is coming back. So we do something so that we just get a benefit and what that does is we just like setting ourselves up for an um for a dependency so and we unlearn to use our hands as a resource to feel for ourselves or use our hand to receive for ourselves so there are two different components here and one component is oh that's interesting there are balloons <laughs> <laughs> Can I do that again? Two components? All this? No, I don't know. It's, just, it's a reaction. It's fun. Um, so, one component is called indirect pleasure. 
Yeah. And indirect pleasure is when I feel and when I touch somebody and when I do something that what is coming back gives me pleasure. Yeah. And what that does, it, it just like keeps us dependent on the response that comes from the outside. But what that does with the object, when we feel an object, we train our attention, we train our capacity to move our hands for our own benefit because nothing is coming back. And that's the so-called sensory inflow, the direct route. So it goes directly from here, from the skin in the brain and has nothing to do with anything outside. And this is what this kind of um, work of somatic consent is all about. It's just like coming back into an embodiment of action for ourselves that is not selfish. That is, I call that the base of engagement. And when this is in place, you can break it down in four different dynamics of human connection. Yeah. And this is the first connection that we all need to have in place to be a self-sovereign, autonomous being that is self-responsible for our action to receive. Yeah. So we go in action for ourselves. That's the first self-loving, self-caring approach of this entire structure. The second one is you go in action for somebody else. Yeah? And what comes back is secondary. It's nice, but it's not the, the um, main focus. And then there is the third one is somebody else is doing something for themselves towards us maybe so that they feel themselves on us like uh, you felt that on the object and that needs kind of permission. Yeah. So you need to give permission neurologically that somebody else can touch you and feel themselves. Or you want somebody else is doing something for you and this person does exactly what you want them to do. And then you are on four different dynamics. And these four different dynamics, they come from a specific structure that calls a three-minute game. So I've written a book about that. It calls the Orgasmic Blueprint, where I've broken everything down in detail um, about how it all works neurologically and how it's all functioning in the body and in the nervous system and how to use it in relationship and how to use it professionally. And, 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 and there's an entire communication system behind that, um, how to create a request and how to create an offer or how to make an invitation. But it's all rooted on this very little exercise, being capable of being in action for ourselves and feel ourselves, without being dependent on something is coming back. So that was it in a little nutshell. And um, I would like to opening it up for questions, responses, ideas, sharings, um, uh, David is playing with that for a while. Uh, Anne Marie is or, uh, already since three years, part of four years, maybe part of this thing, and has been using it a lot. And um, so, um, any question, any comments, uh, very welcome. Let's have a conversation about that. So, so when you having a boundary crossed, and I, yes. I mean, I, I can say that from a place of um privilege because I'm strong enough to protect myself and say no. Somebody's crossing my boundary and I say just no. And I said I say that with uh discernment. I say that very clearly. They said no. And this person is continuing maybe to test my 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 boundaries or just like want to see what's really behind that. The next time I say no, I will say that with anger. Stop it. Yeah. So to express your boundaries, you need your anger. Yeah. Of course, in an appropriate way. When a, when a kid is doing that to test your boundaries, you're still in a position of power. And so, but what I want to say is, you know, sometimes it's really important, specifically in relationship, if boundaries and limits maybe not really clear. Um, 
because many people who are in relationship, they haven't really cleared their boundaries and their limits. It's actually sometimes good to get your boundaries crossed because if you don't get your boundaries crossed, you don't know where they are. And if you are a self-responsible adult and you feel your boundaries getting crossed and it happened again, um, it's a good thing to have a conversation. Hey, this happened now the second time or the third time. And I think we need to have a conversation about that. So I feel like my boundary got crossed here. I have not said no, or I just took the weight anyway. But, you know, I have a limit and I can't do that. And can you please ask me if it's possible if I can do it? And if I say no, I want you to respect that. You know, you know the, the thing is when I'm sharing about the four pillars, you know, um, where the first pillar is self-love, self-care. And then, of course, you need to ask for permission. And then you create an agreement. And the fourth one, you just give your gift, you know, just like love and care for others. So the, if the first one is not in place, none of the other three exists, really. And the first one in play is you're responsible for your limits, for your boundaries. You're responsible for your desires. You're responsible for your feelings. And you need to take ownership of that. So so this is the first one to come in place. The same thing like touching the object. You're responsible for your sensation in your skin to feel pleasure while you are in action. And if this is not in place in your nervous system, and I just speak that more, I say that more in, in general ways. So if this is not in place in somebody's nervous system, they are dependent on somebody else's response. Yeah, you know, the thing is, with this little thing here, it's sorry, it's a little bit like a brainwash, it's a biohack. What it does, it, it shows you where stuff is not in alignment, neurologically, emotionally, physically, and in relationship agreements. And then it's your responsibility or everybody else's responsibility to clean up all these disalignments because you just start to notice, just like, wait a second, what's going on here? Just like, hmm, am I saying it or am I swallowing it? Hmm. Who am I to say that this is not good or good to swallow your anger? You know, if you are in front of a hooligan and they just want to provoke you and they just want to feel your anger, that they can finally attack you, then it's probably a good idea to swallow your anger and just not getting provoked with your anger or move away or do something else. But when it's when it's a situation, for example, with a family member or with a, somebody you're just close to and they just do something or, or a friend who is just like trying to take advantage of you, um, then if you swallow your anger, then you don't contribute to that relationship. It's very healthy to express your anger in a healthy way, in ownership. I feel angry. Yeah, it's good to feel angry. Anger is good. Your anger is welcome. Very good question. Um, I'm not a mother, but I'm a father. <laughs> and I can only say from my perspective as a father, um, uh, as well observing um, the uh, situation with the mom of the kids. So, uh, but, you know, as a mother, you are in a different universe. <laughs> And you are, you are in the universe, you know, when I talked about the four different levels, you know, self-care, self-love, you ask for permission, you just create an agreement about the action. And the fourth one is you give your gift, so love and care. As a mother, specifically with two toddlers, you are in a radical love and care mode all the time. Yeah. And what that does, it just takes so much from your energy. And of course, you know, everybody knows that with children will set that as a justification. Yeah, it gives you so much. It's so beautiful. It's so great. And that's the only thing that saves your butt. Because otherwise, if you just actually ask yourself, why am I doing that? It's just like, wait a second. This is just, this is just like, it's just, oh my God, I just completely lost myself here. I, I, I you know, it's, it's like a holiday if I have 50 minutes for a shower, you know. So so the, the point of the first level of self-love and self-care is absolutely compromised. And the the the, the level what it what it takes from you of being a loving, caring mother. So the fourth, the fourth of the uh four levels, you know, you need to be um uh, functional all the time because if you don't do that your children probably get neglected 
Yeah. So, and specifically mother and mother love is something that I have experienced to some degree, but I have not experienced in my body as a father because it's a different animal in a way. If you're overstimulated with this constant thing of self uh, uh, love and self care through the sound and everything else, it's in my perspective, a perspective, an indicator for a lack of self love and self care and having having space for yourself. What is easier said than done? Yeah. Right. <laughs> what the prices that you will pay out of that. And of course, it's just that you're in constant giving mode and you're constant providing mode and you constantly put your energy in and you just give what you have. And, you know, there is this saying with every every child energetically cost you a tease. Yeah, energetically. And, you know, it's an art form um, creating a relationship agreement with somebody you have this children with who might be as well kind of in a way, caretaking or providing or working or whatever the situation is, I can't tell, um, to have the right agreements to say, hey, you know, I need space now and I need space for 24 hours and I, I need self-love, self-care, otherwise I cannot provide any longer. And what the price is, if you can't do that, you will end up on a burnout. You bite yourself through, you start hating your life, everything sucks. And um, and you might start regretting and getting resentful. Because there's a lot of boundaries, uh, one second, there, there's a lot of boundaries that feel getting crossed where you cannot get angry. Mm -hmm. and that will leak <laughs> out. <laughs> um. I would probably, in a hyper-stimulated situation, not recommend sitting down, closing your eyes, and taking an object. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I would. I would probably, um, and I, I can only imagine the situation because I had. I have as well. I have three children. Um, I mean, they're adults already, but I, I, I know exactly how that is. And, and and it's just like hard sometimes then um, authentically to express how you really feel and what's going on. But what I what I think what's what's the best way is just admitting to say, hey, I'm I'm here on the, on the edge and I feel and and say how you feel, and just uh, just mm -hmm. ask for a kind of a um, kind of time out in the moment or just like honor acknowledge what's going on but i'm just curious because i know ingmarie you have children and marie you have children right and i don't know limo if you're four and uh limo i don't know if you have children but four okay so you are the pros would you like to share a few <laughs> words to ali how how have you been in high demanding responses in super love and care mode of being a mum and noticing you are over the edge and you're far beyond already. So to, to, to add to that, I had so many situations in my life with kids in this high demanding dinner situations where I was knowing, okay, I bite myself through because in one hour they're in bed. And then it's, you know, this is, this is the main thing. So it's like, okay, it's, it's emotionally, neurologically, it's a war zone. Yeah. This is what I would say as, as well, you know, as much as, as you can in between self-love, self-care, you know, just like when, when, when the kid's doing a nap or, you know, when, as soon they're in bed or just like, just, just find the way to recharge your battery because high demanding situation probably won't change. And what, what I would like to add to that is, um, you know, specifically when the children are little, you, you know, there's, there's a German saying around that, you have small children, you have small struggles. And when you have big children, you have big struggles. <laughs> and just enjoy the time <laughs> because it's not getting easier. That, that You know, just like there's another German saying that means if you have one child, you have no child. Yeah. Um, 
but uh, don't tell that people who have only one child because they know how demanding that is already. And um, and, I, I, and and I, I totally agree to that, Limon. So when they're in a certain age, on one point, they're just starting to take care of each other and they just play with each other. And um, and it, it can get easier, but it doesn't have to. Yeah, and, um, you know, what I would say from the four pillars is just like self-love, self-care whenever you can to recharge your battery. And, you know, the love and care part is just like, yeah, sometimes you know it's love and care needed even if you're on the edge and that in itself grows your mother muscle tremendously as you know so this is what sh what what shapes your personality in a different way and you know they will come to this age where you can use the second and the third agreement where you can have a conversation with them and where where you teach them how to ask where you teach them how to contribute, where, they, where you teach them how to give, where you teach them how to have a conversation, where, 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 you, where you educate them in, in your values, in your, in, in your autonomy. And um, so, so that, that, uh, that children have to learn on one point that they're not the only people in the world. Does, is it helpful so far? Does it, does it make sense to you what you hear? Then... I would like to invite you to take an object back in your hands. And um, so emotionally and mentally, just like let the last hour kind of um, go through and reflect on that, what you have heard and some stuff you might have resonated with and some stuff um, you might not. That's all fine and important is that this kind of little exercise here is um, the foundation or the base of self-love and self-care you know and it's the reminder in your skin that there's times in our life where we have to put ourselves first and that we know how to put ourselves first. So going in action for ourselves. And then there are times in life where we know we have to put ourselves second. And the wisdom when to put ourselves first and when to put ourselves second is a skill to learn. It's not always easy. Because if we put only ourselves second, we burn out. And if we put only ourselves first, then we're just becoming um, self-absorbed pricks. So the invitation is to um, use that and 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 do it just when you have the opportunity with an object just to sit down and to feel yourself and use it as a reminder to um, how important self-love, self-care is and use it as a value to put yourself first whenever you can and when your cup is full, on the receiving side, that put yourself second becomes natural, easy, simple, effortless. Because you know how to fill it up. And as your skin is the biggest social organ that we have, it's as well a fantastic opportunity to practice that with a partner if you have one. And if you don't, there's beautiful tentacles on the end of your arms are always there to remind you.
feel yourself. Sometimes it feels like when I'm touching an object and feeling it like as if I'm having a sweet lolly in my mouth. So beneficial, I love that. All right. So slowly and gentle, drink that all in, let it all sink in, that this is yours, that belongs to you. It always will be there. It always was. And I hope that this is a reminder to come deeper into your own body and enjoy yourself whenever you can. And um, I would like to uh, go in and check out what's your takeaway, what resonates with you. And um, anything you would like to have more of, or whatever you want to say, would like to start. Okay. Then I want to say thank you for joining today. Um, this will go on every Monday, every first Monday in a month. Hi, Nicola. Hey. Uh, feel more than welcome to come back. Every first Monday, bring a friend if you want to. There's as well an opportunity to join every Monday if you want. So that's the online um, academy on somatic consent. There is as well the book and the courses and all the details about what we're doing and what we're talking about. If you want to dive deeper, please feel free to reach out. And uh, there's as well on every Wednesday at 7 o'clock, the hands meditation where some of you join. And uh, thanks for joining today. Appreciate that. Thanks for spending time together here. And I just noticed there are just like a few different nationalities. Just uh, German, Italian, Swedish, Canadian. So it's very diverse and international, even that small group. So I like that. Okay. Have a beautiful evening. And... Uh, See you next time. Bye. Thank you. So thank you so much for joining today. I hope you just got something out of it that you would like uh, to share in the comments or if you have any questions, feel feel totally free to drop that. I will personally answer them and uh, love to see you on one of the live calls. You'll find the link as well in the description. Much love and take care. Bye. <laughs>